Hello there, this is David from David Books and Comics, and today I thought I'd show you some of the um, Hawkman, and uh, in particular the uh, work of uh, Joe Kubert on Hawkman. So I'll show you, these are the official Hawkman indexes that came out in the 1980s, and uh, it does feature uh, the... Um, lots of uh, background information on Hawkman uh, like when he first appeared back in 1939 in the pages of Flash Comics number one and he would go on to alternate with the Flash the Golden Age Flash on the covers of the Flash Comics number one so uh, I think up to Issue 108. So this is the index. The editor is Murray Ward. There's different writers uh, in the stories are in this, including um, uh, Catherine Ehrenwold, who was the editor in chief of this series and a, uh, a famous uh, researcher of uh, comic books and comic strips. Anyway, so this is, um, gives you everything. Their weapons, supporting cast, and comrades in arms, the villains as they uh, appeared in the stories. And yes, this is the uh, very first appearance in the Silver Age of Hawkman. And yeah, I do have the issue. This is issue number 34. We'll flip through the uh, original art. I didn't, just didn't want to open this one up. But this is the first Silver Age appearance of uh, Hawkman with a uh, beautiful cover art by uh, Joe Kubert. And uh, this is a very good copy. There's writing on the, writing on the cover, unfortunately. The writer for these stories in all of these uh, Brave and the Bold appearances of Hawkman were uh, written by uh, uh, Gardner Fox. And the artist, of course, was uh, Joe Kubert. And it does have the actual, who the actual letterer is, which was uh, and the uh, uh, cover artist, uh, Joe Kubert, Irish Knapp, is the one who did the, um, this and the lettering. And this, that's our Irish nap. That's his work. Okay, so that's number 34. And we can flip through that. And we come to this issue, which is number 35. And yep, I do have number 35. That's this issue here. And this features two stories. The first story is the first appear first Silver Age appearance, or the first appearance, I should say, of the Matter Master, who was a uh, one of the major um, villains in uh, the DC universe, and uh, a recurring villain um, in Hawkman, but also in other in, in other uh, series. So the uh, Hawkman initially and Hawk Woman were um, the protagonists in the Flash comics, and they were uh, Shira Hall and Carter Hall. But in the Silver Age, what Gardner Fox did is he introduced them as police officers from the planet Thanagar, who were chasing this arch criminal named Byth, on uh, who escaped to earth and they would chasing them they came on their spaceship from thanagar made their way to earth and uh, contacted the uh, retiring uh, police commissioner and managed to convince him that they were there to catch an arch criminal from another planet and the convincing worked. 
because and they were allowed to wear their space you know their police uniforms uh, that they used on on Thanagar and that's what the uh, Hawkman uniform is for so that's how the uh, Silver Age Hawkman was reintroduced they were police officers from the planet uh, Thanagar the uh, they also uh, were uh, located like where they had their home base was in a museum which also uh, corresponds to the um, Golden Age Hawkman because he was also a, a museum uh, director. Anyway, so that's issue number 35, the second appearance of the Silver Age Hawkman. And we flip the page and we have the first, the first appearance of the Shadow Thief, and this is a 12-page uh, story. He uh, appears as a, and he's a very popular arch-villain in the DC Universe because he not only appears in um, several of the uh, Hawkman stories, both both in the in the modern age, but also in the Silver Age. And the the second story, uh, sorry, the first story in this issue, I have to flip it back, I'm trying to remember here. Yeah, it was the strange spell spells of the sorcerer. That's the first story in this issue. So that's that. And the next one is this issue and this is number 42 so between uh, 37 38 39 40 and 41 uh, there were no Hawkman there were other stories but uh, Hawkman returned in for another try on Brave and the Bold in number 42 and this story features a 25 page story called the menace of the dragonfly Raiders And just flip the page here. And then we have uh, one of the uh, another recurring villain in the, in the Hawkman uh, comic books is the Manhawks. And the Manhawks appear in this 25 page story called The Masked Marauders of Earth. And the Manhawks were these intelligent hawk like beings. And what they did is they wore these uh, masks that they used to do this burning ray shield, ray uh, a thing of destruction that they would do. This is a, a paint, a picture of Niagara Falls. So there you go. That's uh, number 43. Looks like this is the Canadian side of Niagara Falls. And in number 44, we have uh, the Brave and Bold, number 44. And this is uh, the men who moved the world. And in this, they have, there's two stories. That's Earth's Impossible Day, and I believe that's... Uh, a challenge that uh, Hawkman is forced to do because of um, Hawk Girl, uh, Hawk Woman. And this is the second story. It's called The Man Who Moved the World. And that one uh, uh, harks back to the, um, looks at the, the mythology of uh, ancient Egypt, actually which was a recurring theme in Gardner Fox's stories in the, in the Golden Age, actually. And I do have uh, the Mystery in Space issues, which I'll show in another episode um, uh, when I showcase the Hawkman uh, as, as drawn by uh, Murphy Anderson. And there's number one.
That's the first solo issue of Hawkman, number two. And number three and number four, where the uh, Zatanna makes her uh, first appearance. Uh, number five, that's the return of the Shadow Thief and the ever-present gorilla story that you see in in the uh, 19, mid-1960s in uh, DC Comics. And number seven, number eight, and up to number nine, uh, 17, I think. 16. All right. So that's the Brave and the Bold issues. But I also wanted to show you some, uh, the, one of the last uh, works of. This is the interior art of the. Um, this is the interior art of these stories. Like I can show you some of that. So this I was uh, lucky to find. I wanted to collect a um, a complete um, set of the Gardner Fox Joe Kubert, and this edition does a nice job, both in the coloring and its presentation. The only thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't uh, present. A beautiful introduction by Julius Swartz. Yeah, it doesn't do the first the the cover uh, the first cover of uh, Brave and the Bold thirty four. It just goes right into the artwork, which is fine. And that's what it was like. The coloring is not bad, considering it was computer generated. The coloring is actually pretty good. So that's that's bite. The arch criminal that they chase. Now, in in these stories, that's the, uh, Mavis Trent. She makes her first appearance in this issue. Now, in these stories, uh, Carter Hall uh, is his real name is Cutter Hall. K a t a r Hall H o l. And then, uh, when they work in the museum, they pretend to be Carter Hall. Same with Shiera. She is Shira Hall in the Golden Age, and here it's Shiera Hall, H O L. They are husband and wife. So there you go. That's uh, Creature of a Thousand Shapes. That's issue number 34. And then we come to. Issue number 35, The Menace of the Matter Master. And uh, there he is there, first appearance. And that's the second story, uh, The Valley of Vanishing Men. Mavis Trent would appear in Volume 2 of the um, Hawkman uh, comic book, which I have a near-complete set of, and I can show you those that are in a later episode. So that's that. And there is the Shadow Thief, an excellent one of the best arch villains in the DC Universe. One of the more popular ones, anyway. So that's the Shadow Thief of Midway City. And that's his first appearance. And that is him. I don't believe. And this is his origin issue too, because it gives you his background. Yeah. It's one of the better uh, one of the better uh, stories in the whole series. And this is the Menace of the Dragonfly Raiders. Of issue 42. And 
that's a 25 pager and there's the manhawks the mass marauders of earth These are excellent stories. And that's that's impossible day. That's when uh, Hawk Girl wanted to experience and celebrate impossible day like they do on the planet Thanagar. So they had to go through a series of adventures. And the men who moved the world. And like I said, this is where he gets into a kind of the Egyptian myths, uh, which is something that Gardner Fox was uh, fond of and would return to in uh, many of the other stories that he wrote for DC Comics. This is one of the better stories in the, in the whole uh, Hawkman, Hawkman series. Okay. And I also wanted to show us just some of the covers. Uh, these, this is again the later work of uh, Joel Kubert. I have this. Uh, this is Showcase uh, 101 and Showcase 102 and 103, which I have uh, all three issues of. And I have most of the run, including the first of the Adam Hawkman title. And he drew, uh, Joe Kubert drew the cover for a Hawkman number 27, which I have. When I show the, the Murphy Anderson uh, Hawkman series. Um, I also wanted to share I wanted to share this cover because it's one of the best covers that I've ever seen in uh, in the Silver Age comic books. This has a uh, what's called a subscriber's crease. Um, so this is a painted cover of uh, Hawkman uh, number forty four, and some of these painted covers, the ones done in uh, in Green Lantern and. Um, other Silver Age uh, comic books by DC is some of the best, I think, cover art uh, that you can find in comic books, especially from the Silver Age. This one was done by, uh, the lettering was done, of course, by Irish Schnapp but for the cover. The art, of course, is Joe Kubert, but the colorist here is Jerry Serp. And uh, it's some of the, uh, like I said, some of the best work uh, that he that he did, and he did other work, like I said, for um, for the Green Lantern series as well, which looks uh, quite beautiful. Now I'll show you one of the last artwork of um, Joe Kubert. And this came out, uh, I'll show you when. So this is Joe Kubert's uh, painted work. This is called Joe Kubert Presents. And um, there you have the... So this is Joe Kubert here. And uh, this is the... Uh, the uh, Hawkman, beautiful Hawkman drawing. And that's a self portrait of Kubert. And I can tell that Joe Kubert loved doing Hawkman. He loved doing the character. Here he makes a presentation. And it's probably some of the best Hawkman work I've ever seen. And some of Joe Kubert's uh, excellent artwork. There you go. This one, I think, I believe, takes place on the planet Thanagar. 
and it's kind of got an ecological theme to it. That's why many people consider him the best of, of the Hawkman artists. Like he started drawing Hawkman when he was quite young, still a teenager, um, working on uh, on Flash comics, and I believe, and also in All American comics where Hawkman was part of the Justice Society of America. And I believe uh, he, he also did uh, work on Phantom Lady when uh, uh, he was working for Quality Comics. Yeah, so there, so that's Kubert. Sadly, he died in uh, 2015. Um, you know, but I also want to show you some more uh, the later issues of Hawkman. Uh, I'll show the uh, more of the Silver Age at a later episode. Um, here is the Jeff Johns series, and Jeff Johns was again. More than any other comic book writer, he has done the most, I think, for helping to recover some of the mythos of um, the uh, DC superheroes. He was a, a, a good student of the Hawkman stories, but also a contributor, and I would consider him a co-creator of, of uh, Hawkman based on the contribution uh, contributions that he made. And uh, this is book one. And again, it's one of the better runs of the Hawkman series. Well worth the read. This is volume two. You can also get these two volumes in one big, thick hardcover anthology with uh, all of the appearances of uh, Hawkman. So this is uh, Jeff Johns book one, book two. And again, the art is consistently good. I believe Riggs Morales is one, Michael Bear is the other. James Robinson are the artists on the series. So that's that. And of course, there's also the um, Robert Venditti series, and this is uh, book one. Again, the art, nobody can complain. It's excellent artwork. And here's the Atom. So there's that, and it's book this is volume one, and yeah, this is volume three. I have the singletons between volume one and volume three. This was uh, well worth collecting the uh, singletons of the series because the cover arts on all of them are excellent. And this is the last of the Venditti, uh, Venditti Hawkman. And uh, more than any other uh, writer, uh, Venditti uh, did the most, I think, to bring Hawkman into the modern age and, more importantly, uh, bring the whole uh, stories, all the Hawkman uh, incarnations, because he has several incarnations, as they say, into one character. And... Um, like I said, it's probably the best uh, to date of uh, the Hawkman uh, stories. And I'm sure there will be more to come. And uh, so thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for subscribing. And uh, again, feel free to comment with anything that you want to share. And if you enjoyed it, remember to give me the like. Remember to comment, and thanks again for subscribing. Bye. Bye.